Hello everyone. Today we will learn how to use a rotary encoder on Raspberry Pi platform. Before we start doing this experiment, let's see the phenomenon first. Rotary encoder is a switch electronic component with a set of regular and strict timing sequence pulses. When using with IC, it can achieve increment, decreasement, page turning, and other operations. For example, mouse curl, menu selection, acoustic sound regulation, frequency regulation, toaster temperature regulation, and so on. Most rotary encoders have five pins with three functions of turning left, turning right, and pressing down. Pin 2 is generally collected to ground. Pin 1 and pin 3 are first collected to pull up resistor and then to microprocessor. In this experiment, they are collected to GPIO0 and GPIO1 of Raspberry Pi. When we rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise, there will be pulse outputs in pin 1 and pin 3. The figure shows if GPIO0 is at high level and GPIO1 is also at high level, it indicates rotary encoder rotates clockwise. If GPIO0 is at high level, but GPIO1 is at no level. It indicates the rotary encoder rotates anti-clockwise. Therefore, during programming, you only need to judge the state of pin 3 when pin 1 is at high level. Then you can judge whether the rotary encoder rotates clockwise or anti-clockwise. In this experiment, we need the following components, rotary encoder module and Duban wells. Next. Let's build the circuit. Collect pin DT to GPIO0, pin CLK to GPIO1, positive pole to 3.3 volts, and negative to ground. Now we have finished building the circuit. Let's start writing code. Enter into test directory. For your convenience, we have written the code in advance. Define DT as GPIO0. Define CLK as GPIO1. Define a global variable global counter to count. The well statement is used to detect whether you have performed any rotation. If it's true, if it rotates clockwise, then the global counter adds 1. If anti-clockwise, it subtracts 1, else we do not count. The nested mean function set GPIO0 and GPIO1 as input mode because we need to detect the status of the external rotary encoder. The other thing we need to do is to print the value of global counter on the screen. Compile the code. Run the program. Now, when I screw the rotary knob clockwise, the number printed on screen gets bigger and bigger. When anti-clockwise, it gets smaller and smaller. Press Ctrl and C to terminate. That's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching. See you next time.